Hello, you guys. Welcome back to the Code Searcher. I'm the Code Searcher, Jonathan, and this is a follow up to the last video talking about the wheat. So I wanted to bring another witness to you on this issue and get you to think about this because. <clears throat> <laughs> and I've been called delusional because of this, you guys, but I'm I'm certain. I know what I'm talking about. I've studied this for three years. I'm very intimate with the growth cycle of the grain. And I know what I'm talking about, you guys. And there's something fishy here. I got another witness for you. So hang tight to, to, to this. And we're going to talk some more. I want to show you this from World's Last Chance. Uh, this is... Not where I got this information, but this is a witness to, because I'm not the only one that can see this. And certainly there have to be people who are involved in, in the grain, who are in, involved in agriculture, like farmers, guys that drive tractors and trucks, and know that I'm telling you the truth. If you're watching this, please contact me. I need people, I need boots on the ground. So at Pentecost time, we can go into the field and see what the wheat looks like. And you guys, okay, so some of the arguments I hear <laughs> coming into this are, you know, some of them are, are, are laughable. And then some of them I can, I can get where you're trying to rationalize this 50-day thing, okay? Maybe they planted the grain earlier. You guys, the Bible says there are seasons for everything. Wheat has a season. You can't plant it out of season in the region that you lived, where you live. Some 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 regions you can make more than one planting, but in other regions you cannot do so, and you can't alter your planting in harvest time. You might do that. I mean, there's nothing to say that you can't plant your seeds at a certain time, but if it's at a, at a monsoon season, guess what? You will not get a harvest because your seeds are washed out. OK, so you can't just go on a whim and decide, OK, here's my day that I want to hit and, and therefore adjust your planting time. It doesn't work that way. And if you're thinking like that, chances are, and I'd be willing to bet the farm, you're not a farmer and you don't know what you're talking about. It doesn't work that way. Everything has a season. Yeshua tells us in John 4 about this particular grain. And this is what he says. Hang tight. Get into it. All right. John 4, verse 35. And Yeshua says to the Pharisees, do you not say that there are still four months and the harvest comes? He's asking a rhetorical question here. Well, what is he talking about? Does anybody know? Anybody got a guess of what he's talking about? Let me help you out a little bit. The context of what he's talking about in this season is he's talking about wheat. And it takes more than four months to get a harvest. And that depends on what you, what you plant, whether you plant spring wheat, which is planted in the spring. It's not harvested in the spring, you guys. The Bible says wheat is harvested in the summer. It's the summer grain. It's planted in early spring and also early winter. So all of winter, it's underground and it's germinating. It's coming, just breaking the ground in winter time. So by the time it's in spring, you've got pretty large leaves of grass because that's essentially what it is. It's a grass that, that grows, okay? The fact is, it takes more than four months to get a harvest. Hold on just a second. Let me see if this will work. Let's do this before we go any further. Just do this. This is for fun. Okay. Go to your phone and ask Siri. Hey, Siri. What, what are the number of days it takes from planting to harvest for, for wheat to grow? takes 120 days from planting to maturity winter wheat takes 240 days what you don't say okay so 
Siri tells us that spring wheat takes 120 days to mature. And winter wheat takes 240 days. Please tell me how you get a wheat festival called Chavo, but also called Pentecost, because I believe that there are two different days now. I didn't see this before, but now I see just like that they inserted this Jesus in front of our Yeshua, they inserted this day called Pentecost in front of our Shavuot. It's meant as a distraction. That's what it is, you guys. I can't come to any other conclusion because there's no other place in the Bible other than Acts, it talks about this day called Pentecost, which is a Greek word, by the way. It does not fit to what Yahuwah has preserved in this thing we call wheat. He preserved his day Shavuot in the growth cycle of wheat, you guys, because he knew man would come along and try to tamper with it. And oh, yes, he has. With the calendar and with the grain, because now we have GMO grains, so you have to sort through those. And if any of you are coming and saying, oh, they're, they're harvesting the grain in May, which is the third month, it's also in the spring, I would be willing to bet the farm you're talking about a GMO grain because the whole reason they genetically modify something is because you want to get shorter growth seasons and larger yields. That's the whole reason why they genetically modify. But if you're talking about emmer or durum wheat, which is more than 5,000 years old and has a season, and that season is exactly the same from the United States all the way around the world, through the Middle East, through Israel. Israel does not have its own growing seasons, you guys. And they do grow GMO grain. That's been proven. Okay, so don't come at, at me with those arguments. We're talking about biblical grain in ancient times being harvested by hand. And my argument to you is you cannot grow wheat and get a harvest and thresh it and mill it and turn it into two loaves for a wave offering in 50 days. If you can do that, I will get off YouTube and pay you $10,000. If you can show me how that's possible. I challenge anybody. That's your challenge right there. If you could show me where wheat is being harvested at 50 days anywhere in the world, and it's non-GMO, I'll get off YouTube. I'll give this whole thing up. The reason I say that is because I know for a fact you cannot prove me wrong. I've studied this too much. I know what I'm talking about like it's the back of my hand. And you need to know this information, too. And I challenge you to go prove me wrong. Don't just be, you know, a little keyboard. Um, what do they call it? No, go do the research. Come back with, with legitimate findings and prove to me that you can get wheat in 50 days. It cannot happen. Here's my second witness, you guys. Okay, so I want to just share this to you. This is from World's Last Chance. Somebody asked me just two days ago if World Last Chance had a teaching on this, and I didn't know if they did or not, but I happened to find it in the, in the Defense Lunar S Sabbath video, part three, at around 10 minutes and 27 seconds. So I want to share that with you. As another witness, Jonathan is not delusional. He knows what he's talking about. Matter of fact, I got codes to prove it. Here's what World's Last Chance has to say. And we got to, you know, bear a few seconds. The continuous week um, was therefore one of the most significant here. breakthroughs in human beings' attempts to break away from being prisoners of nature and create a social world of their own. This statement is nothing more than an admission of apostasy. It should be understood in the context of Jewish admissions that modern Judaism is the spiritual descendant of the Pharisees, whose traditions, adaptations, and prevarications the Savior denounced. 
It is impossible to count the Pentecost on the lunar solar calendar. Using the lunar solar calendar is the sole way to currently count to Pentecost. It is only by using the biblical calendar that all the requirements for reckoning Pentecost can be met. Scripture provides three time parameters that must be met in order to correctly count to Pentecost. These are clearly given in Leviticus 23, 15 and 16. You shall also count for yourselves from the day after the Sabbath that you bring the wave sheaf, seven Sabbaths. They must be complete. Then after the seventh Sabbath, you shall count 50 days. The three requirements as set forth in scripture are one, start the count on wave sheaf the day after the high Sabbath. Two, seven Sabbaths must be complete. You guys, the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm pausing here is I just want to point out uh, one thing, because some of some of the, the counters of the calendar for the Hebrews are observing this particular day differently. Because their Zadok calendar doesn't line up and their high Sabbaths, I mean, because every time you have a Passover, you got a high Sabbath. And the day after that is when you start counting the weeks. Okay, not Omers. We're not counting Omers here. That is a Talmudic Jewish ritual, period. The day after Passover, we're counting from there because that's when the wave sheep, uh, it's not seven days later because it, the Zadok want to do that seven days later because they're, they have to do it the day after the Sabbath. But the high Sabbath, which always happens with the lunar solar, is the next day. And the reason I'm telling you that is because there's a really interesting thing that happens when you count this correctly. This is the only feast of Yahuwah's feast that's not given to you as a day. In other words, we know when Passover is and we know when Sukkot is, which both, by the way, are marked by a full moon. We know exactly when those days are in the calendar, but the, the Shavuot, we have to count the weeks to get the exact day. And let me tell you, folks, Every time from the beginning, when Yahuwah started doing this at at Sinai, and it was it, it was um, Exodus thirty two, where Moses came down with the law, and they were worshiping the calf. This is Shavuot, and it was defiled. The very first day was defiled. But there's something else about that, because when you count. The day after Shabbat uh, of the the Sabbath on Pen on Passover, and you count one hundred and two days because that's what it is. Seven Sabbaths complete, and then fifty days is one hundred and two days. He says in this video it's approximately one hundred days, but you guys with the new moons it's one hundred and two days, and you know where it leads you to. Every time it will be a new moon phase where there's no moon. The moon is completely black. And I find that really interesting because he hid Shavuot from us and he gives it back to us during a hidden moon. It's the only feast that happens on a new moon cycle. The other ones happen at a full moon. So you got full moons on either end in the very center of the calendar. The Shavuot, it's not called Pentecost, is a new moon. Count it. Count it and see if it don't happen. And I've got a calendar here, and I can show you, in fact, that 102 days falls on. And if this will show the white, and, uh, okay, let's do this. I'll take off the uh, the background because it's, it's blurring the, uh, it's blurring, it's blurring the, uh, the, the thing here, right? You see that day right there? Right there is 102 days. You see what day it is? It's July 17th. July 17th is Shavuot this year, according to the lunar solar calendar. It falls on a new moon. There will not be a new a moon seen because it's concealed. 
and this feast is concealed. 102 days. The growth cycle of wheat, you guys. The growth cycle of wheat happens on a new moon day. Now, I want to continue with the second witness of this video, you guys, because this is really important. Now, we're up to seven Sabbaths complete. Watch what the man says. Three, number 50 days. Seven Sabbaths complete provides seven complete weeks, starting on wave shift. Now, if you're keeping the Zadok calendar or any calendar that only counts 50 days, guess where you're going to come to? You're going to come to the third month. And that's where your, your account's going to end, somewhere around there. It doesn't say that in Acts 2. It doesn't say 10 days later. It says when, when the feast was fully come. And I, I, I submit it's more than 10 days. Here's what actually happens. Chief. On the next day after the seventh Sabbath, the count to 50 days begins, depending upon the number of days in the third month or lunation, this 50 count takes you to either the 28th or 29th of the fourth month. You see where that is? This is at new moon time at the end of the fourth month. So going into the fifth month is when you have Shavuot. And guess when it is? harvest time for the wheat all around the northern hemisphere fact 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 it's a fact you can't you you can argue till you blue in the face it's a fact the entire count from wave sheaf is approximately 100 days the feast of weeks the count from wave sheet is approximately 100 days. And I'm going to correct him there. It's 102 days. That's a fact. Period. Case closed. So don't, unless you are an expert in the, in the growth cycle of wheat and you're some kind of farmer from West, you know, from um, Kansas or something like that, shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. Go research it and stop arguing with this, you know, misnomer that Pentecost is Shavuot because it is not. It's an inserted day. Revolves around the first fruits of the summer wheat harvest. Summer wheat harvest. And because harvest. wheat calls for 100 to 120 days to... The wheat takes 100 to 120 days. Mature, the entire process constitutes just about four months. The great feature of the celebration, Feast of Weeks, was the presentation of two loaves made from the first fruits of the wheat harvest. So what we're going to do is that when everybody is celebrating Pentecost, what we're going to do is we're going to have boots on the ground, and if that means I got to drive to Kansas myself and go stand in a wheat field and show you there is no wheat harvest going on. And if I got to contact farmers in Israel to go stand in their feet, their, 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 their fields at Pentecost time and show you there is no wheat to be harvested. Maybe, maybe then, maybe then you'll go and research what I'm telling you and see not only were you lied about the name of the Father and the Son, not only were you lied about the day of the Shabbat, folks, you've been lied to completely. Completely. And and even to the point where you're it just, it's called bait and switch. You're giving another day for the real day. That's where, that's what it comes to. And to think that the enemy is not capable of that and he's manipulated, why would he do that? Why would he do that in the first place, you guys? Any any answer to that? You know why he would do that? Because of what happened in the upper room. And it wasn't called Pentecost. This is what the, the translator called it later. It was Shavuot. And guess what happened then? They were in one mind and in one accord, and on one calendar, and they weren't divided, and the Spirit was poured out upon them. That's what happened. 
They weren't fighting over the calendar. They were all on the same calendar. And it was an agriculture calendar at that time, you guys. At the time of Yeshua, it was not a Saturday observance. What the Zadok people are doing today is not what they were doing. That came along 300 years after Yeshua. That's a historical fact. I'm going to I'm going to stop here with this video you guys and here's my challenge to anybody anybody on any other calendar Saturday Zadok Enoch whatever you want to call it prove to me your calendar show me your calendar show me bible verses show me anything that proves your calendar other than jubilees and Enoch don't twist what you see in Enoch and jubilees to fit your delusion because I can take those same books and prove to you the lunar solar calendar. There are contradictions in those books, and this is why we don't use them. It's called bad hermeneutics when you do. Fact is, it takes more than 100 days to grow wheat. I rest my case, Your Honor. So long to you. May Yahuwah bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you. I pray that Yahuwah reveals this truth to you and that you come to the, to the knowledge and to the understanding of his feast days, his actual feast days, and not the traditions of men or the delusions of some, you know, people out there in Arizona. Shalom to you. May you bless you.